Well, here we go. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being patient with us. Um, our, our live attendees are currently getting brought into the webinar, so I, uh, I appreciate you guys being a little flexible and waiting for us because you know technology. Um, it's, it's a pro and a con. So <laughs> welcome to another one of our webinars, um, EagleSoft webinars. I am Laura Hatch, and I'm pleasure to have Andre here with us today. Um, hey, Laura. And, and we have to explain to everybody why we had to get started a minute or two late. So, Andre, could you could you tell us where you are and where you just came from? Uh, here, I'll, I'll do better than that. See, if everybody sees behind me, I'm actually at Chicago Air O'Hare Airport. Just got off a plane not even well, not even six minutes ago. So, that's I'm just awesome. getting here. That's awesome. I'm glad you have good internet connection and that this works. So for everybody, um, Andre and I, I am the owner of Front Office Rocks and I do online front office training. Um, Andre and I also travel around the country. You're on your way to Chicago for something, I'm assuming? Yeah, I'm working with a doctor here in the in Chicago area. Okay, great. And I just got home last night. I was with Smiles at Sea on a dental cruise. So my voice is, is kind of struggling because I was speaking on a cruise and having a little bit of fun. Um, Andre's on his way to work. I'm home, leave on Tuesday so, or Thursday. So we're here for you guys um, in between trying to help you with EagleSoft. So um, welcome to everybody. Um, this is our live version right now of EagleSoft. We're going to, each one of these webinars, Andre and I work together about trying to help you in the office um, implement EagleSoft, learn more about it, learn the tips and tricks. I'm all about training, helping your dental front office teams become um, front office rock stars. And Andre, tell us just a little bit about you and, and why I have you on here helping us with EagleSoft. Uh, I, I run the now the largest uh, EagleSoft Facebook group um, that there is. Um, and I'm just devoted to the software, but I go around the country teaching people how to get the most out of the software um, and out of their practices using the software. So that's my, that's my daily life, uh, running uh, the crew process. That, that's great. And so the reason Andre and I do this is he goes in office, he helps offices with EagleSoft. I help offices with how to implement things, how to get better in, in, in the front office or the whole team. And we together want to give you some, you know, access some free access to learning more. So today we're going to talk about um, services and qu service codes and quick picks. Um, uh, we're going to, we're going to go on his computer so he can show you some things for those that are live with us today. There's a chat feature on the right hand side. So when I give the control over to Andre, we're going to go to his screen and then I'm going to be monitoring your chats and I will ask questions to Andre along the way. So if it pertains to something he's in, so we can all learn. If there's a question that comes across that, um, you know, we didn't have time to get to or we're kind of, uh, you know, it's not in that area now. Andre and I will make sure we get an answer for you. And then at the end, we'll let you know how to get connected with us because we want to be here to help you any way we can in the front office. So um, what we'll do, like I said, is Andre will take over here and please ask questions. Um, I'll monitor them and ask them to Andre. We'll go 45 minutes-ish to an hour. Um, and so Andre, do you want to go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing? Yep. So right. let's do that. Pass it over. And I know they want to see what we look like, but I'm going to turn off our videos too, and we'll just let you show us EagleSoft. So if you want Perfect. to do that too. Yep. All right. Let's see. Where's my video? There we go. Stop video. Okay. Cool. Gotta love technology. I know, I know, I know. So if everybody can see my screen, what we're going to start with is actually the front office because there's there's a lot more there that we need to work on, which is under list and service codes. We're going to go through um, the better use of the service codes, how you can set them up. Um, I know we have a lot of EagleSoft users who were previously SoftNet users um, who are used to being able to do things like um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 after a service code. That's not something you can do in EagleSoft. EagleSoft stays with the traditional ADA setup of a, a letter, an alpha, so we put an alpha, and then four numerics. So let's go to our list. Let's put up just the first on our list, which is the D0120. So everything starts with a service code, and that service code is the internal way that you're going to be able to search for your code. The second code is the ADA code. So you'll see in my list, and we're going to show you some things later on, where I've changed the service code. I've changed the internal code, but what bills to the insurance company is the ADA code, and that's what should be. 
Um, I, and I can tell you, I, I fought with an office recently where they thought that they could leave this as a D, as a zero zero one twenty, and that the insurance company would tr would just switch it over. And <laughs> uh, I, I said, yeah, the insurance company will do that, but it's going to slow your claim down. It's going to put it to paper, and it's going to take two weeks to process your claim because some you know manual person at the at the insurance company is going to have to change it for you. So. So we want to make sure that we have the true ADA codes. And just so you know, the ADA um, for 2019 will have some changes, uh, big changes in the area of um, uh, night guards. Um, there's going to be some clarification of the codes. So be aware, uh, January 1, um, there are going to be some codes. And if you don't get them changed, you're going to get some denials of uh, January 2nd, 2019. So let's start with that. So ADA code and then the display abbreviation is actually what shows up on the quick pick buttons when we get to that part and also what shows up when we schedule this procedure. So if I schedule a D120, I'm going to have P exam show up on my screen. Now, um, this is a great way for offices to be able to clarify on a recall visit. Is this a periodic exam? Is this a initial exam, you know, and you, you've got four digits to try to make that happen. So you could put just exam here. Uh, I like putting P exam. All right. Now, um, I also will set up some codes where this might be a periodontal exam. So maybe that does need to be changed. So, and uh, the other thing I want you guys to look at is, I'm going to move that to the side. If you notice here that all my exams don't say exam, they say evaluation. The ADA changed that years ago. So we don't do exams in the dental field anymore. We do evaluations. So your exams need to be updated and you need to make sure that you're clarifying that you're actually doing evaluations and not exams. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. I didn't actually even know that. So we oh, should yeah. go into all the exam codes and change it to evaluation. Yeah, and see what happens is when the ADA updates their codes, um, EagleSoft will send you what's new, but it doesn't change the existing codes that you have. So if you've had a code in there since, you know, you started with EagleSoft 20 years ago, um, it, it, it hasn't updated. The okay. description hasn't updated. The nomenclature hasn't updated. And what I like to do is I actually go in and I actually clarify it as much as possible so that the people in the back aren't choosing the wrong codes. Typically, they don't know the codes as well as the front does. So what happens is I want to make sure that the codes are really, really clear. So this says evaluation periodic oral established. And then if you look down here, evaluation limited, focused, emergency, you know, and it doesn't matter what you name them, because like I said, 90% of the people out there using EagleSoft don't have the correct nomenclature anyway. Right. So don't worry about what you're naming it. Make it so that it works for you. Okay, great. All right. The next part down is the description, obviously. And then the next part is the category of services that are going to be how it's classified for your insurance process. We're going to talk about that in a minute because that's something that really uh, will help you when you when it comes to um, estimation of insurance. So then it goes to your standard fee at the time units and relative value, which um, nobody really should be using this um, unless you're in a Medicaid situation. Um, you work for um, an office that works with the you know tribal health um, Indian reservation. Um, but most of this time units and relative value has no no bearing in what we do in a normal GP office, quote unquote. What does it change, or what is what's the, why is it in there? What is it? It's for calculation purposes. Relative value is the. I mean, every procedure code has a value. The value of the one twenty code is one, and the value of say a crown twenty seven fifty is twenty four point one seven. I mean, this is just my. You know, my rain man, I know these numbers off the top of my head, you know, but uh, so it takes 24.17 times longer to do a crown than it does to do an exam. Oh, got so it. Relative value of that procedure. But just um, to be clear, this does not, those do not change the time of the appointment that it opens to. That's in a different part of the soft. The length. It's a completely different part. Yep. Has nothing to do with it. All okay. right. And then the next section down here is uh, what the, when you use this code, is it going to ask for a surface, a root, a tooth, or is it just general to the mouth and not ask you for anything else? So that's, you know, a lot of times people will go in and they'll actually switch, say, a root canal to just be a tooth. So it's not asking for the root. 
Uh, but that will change the way that the drawing works long term in Eaglesoft. So you have to be careful what you choose just to make it convenient. A lot of times people will choose mouth for a denture because they're like, well, you know, I shouldn't have to choose a tooth for a denture. It's a denture. But it does make a difference. If you don't use a tooth, it will not uh, delete it from the charting. So can you just give us examples? So surface would be fillings. Surface would be fillings because it's going to ask you for what surface is, what surface is it. Root's going to ask you, is it a distal root, a mesial root, or is it a single root? Okay. The tooth is going to ask you for the tooth number, and the mouth won't ask you for anything. Okay. All right. I think that's huge because I know that when I was missing the draw, drawing, you know, what the different options are, this is really powerful. Yeah, so, okay. Yep. And I, like I said, a lot of times it's done for convenience because you're like, oh, I'm tired of being bugged for a root, but it does make a, a difference long term. All right. Then the bottom part, is this a taxable service? I mean, a lot of things like um, take home whitening and things like that are taxable services depending on the state you're in. So you know, is it a taxable service? And um, if so, Eaglesoft will process it as a taxable service. It'll actually add the taxes to it. Um, the next part down is do we submit this to insurance? So I'm gonna show you some situations where you don't submit it to insurance. So imagine something like um, diagnostic models and you want to post that to the, to the ledger. Well, you don't want that necessarily to go to the insurance company, so you can uncheck that box and that will not generate a claim for that particular claim, that service. Which is, so examples I'm thinking of, right, is if, you, if you're charting things like a toothbrush or whitening period or something, you would unclick that so it doesn't go show as an insurance claim. Perfect, yep, perfect example. Yep. Okay. And even like if you make a code up for, if, if the doctor does a remake of a, of a you know, restoration, it's a great way to make sure that it won't go to insurance. And that's important because if you've got a lot of claims that show they're outstanding to insurance, but they're codes like this, then you've got, it messes up your insurance report. So you want to make sure that you're unclicking that if it's not an insurance. Uh, Definitely. Yep. And, and like I always try to tell people, you can make up more codes, any code you want. So don't make it so that you're relying on remembering to uncheck that in the walkout process. Make yourself a new code if you're going to, you know, if you have a code you use all the time. We have a question um, about the taxable service before yep. you move on. If it's ta if it's checked, that taxable service, will it add tax every time this code is used automatically? Yes, it will. Yep, okay. based on the preferences, and I'll show you where that is. Let me just okay out of this one and show you. It's under file and preferences, and there I think it's on the accounting tab. Uh, yeah, here, if you have a tax rate in there, it will automatically add that tax rate to that code. Perfect. I'm glad I remember where that was. I I know, right? You're yeah. on the spot. They said, awesome, thank you. So they're glad they that. So let's get back into our periodic exam. Okay. And the next things down are, um, do we apply a discount? So if there's something you never want to apply a discount to, I, I just had a situation where an office was doing a gold restoration and they applied a discount and it discounted it so much that it was under the cost of the gold. So that's something you might want to de definitely disconnect from. And then uh, is it an active service or not? If it's something um, when the, the um, fluoride codes updated, we had to inactivate a lot of fluoride codes. So we, we uncheck that button. You can't delete something that's been used, but you can sure as heck inactivate it. All right. And then does this code update the patient's recall visit? This is really important. Um, you know, this is the kind of button you want to set for your trophies, for your periodic, uh, your perio maintenance. Um, and those are the three codes, the adult profi, the child profi, and the periodic maintenance. Those are great codes to connect this to. I've had a situation where um, an office wanted to update recall when a patient had an implant placed. So we actually connected it to the implant uh, placement code, the, the D6010 code, so that it would automatically set that person on a six-month recall when they had the implant placed. And Why would they, that's interesting. I've never heard that. Why would they want that? Just on a side note. Just so the patient didn't get lost in the mix. I think it was a patient who was fully edentulous okay. and wanted that to be, you know, we could have done it. We could have connected it to the, the denture code too. So, yeah. but, okay. But it was their idea. So let them have it. The next two down are, are well, the next one down is um, will this update the patient's last Panorax? I prefer to have this checkbox. Uh, we can have the mount, the Panorax mount. Um, update it, but I don't like that because offices will use a Panorex mount for other images, um, and it'll if you do that, it will say the patient just had a Panorex taken, even if you put a PA in that mount. So this is where I would update my Panorex, 
And then this is one of my favorite things, allow for a free form description. And I'll show you how this works when we get into a walkout. But by checking this box, when we walk up a service out, we can actually go in and modify the description of that code. Now, good and bad. If you're doing that all the time, then you need a new code. You need to just make codes up for the things that you're redescribing, you know, redescribing uh, re something. But if a one-off thing, if you know, you want to just type in some descriptor here, you know, instead of establish, you want to put uh, from Dr. Jones's office or something like that. You can during a walkout by checking the freeform description. All right. Next was our, do, do we allow this, this code to generate a post-op call list? So at your end of the day, you can actually automatically generate a post-op call for any service that has had a, this checked off. So example would be um, extractions, endo, perio surgery, those kind of things that you automatically want to generate a post-op call for that procedure. And then right. you don't have to show us, but that will then generate for, to a report. We can pull the report for post-op calls. Exactly. Yep. And if you're using Revenue Well, it'll also help with you. It'll tag it too. So Revenue Well will generate something for you too. That's great. Okay. Yep. And then does it generate a lab, a lab case? Um, this is good and bad. I mean, if you check this box, what's going to happen is when you do a walkout, it's going to make you create a, a, a lab slip. But the lab slips are typically done in the clear clinical area and not during a walkout. So it's kind of weird that it's a part of the walkout process. But if you want to force to, a lab slip to be created, there's a good way to do it. And actually, that's funny because somebody just said, we love this feature, except for we want it to pop up in the operatory, not at the walkout. Is that changeable? That's not changeable. Ah, see, and that's exactly where I was going. Yeah, it's tough. So I uncheck this by default. And then what I do is, you know, I'll, I'll just train my offices to do the, the, uh, the last slip in the, in the operatory. Okay. And that's funny. One of the list of things that people are asking about is lab tracking. Cause I've tried to make this work in the office too. And when you're doing a walkout, half the time we just click past it and then we have all these lab cases that aren't tracked correctly. So it's, um, yeah, okay, yeah it's, it's, it's a poorly placed idea, but I, I get why they did it, but it's just not a good idea. For me. Is it something that, um, they potentially would change in the future? I know that they always ask for feedback from the, from the users. I, I I can't say, but my, my thought is no, because not enough people use Lab Tracker to be squeaky wheels. Okay. You know, so yeah, that's where I come from on that one. Okay. All right. And then the go back to where we said about the Panorex. Here's the update the last Bite Wings and then update the last FMX. Same idea. Excellent. Now, at the bottom, who is this procedure normally performed by? Is it performed by the doctor or hygienist? Now, Here's another one, another time when if there's a, a situation where sometimes the doctor does the Panorex and sometimes the hygienist does the Panorex, I actually make two codes, one for the doctor, one for the hygienist. So I'll have a, uh, a D330 uh, and then I'll have an H330. Uh, so one for the hygienist, one for the doctor, depending on who does it. You know, if you're finding that in the walkout, it's, you know, it's slowing you down by having to figure out who did this procedure, might as well just create the codes for that. Hey, People are cheering for you in the background, Andre. I know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, if you've joined us late, he's uh, helping us out, but he's doing it from the Chicago O'Hare Airport. So sorry for the noise in the background. So just to be clear, what you just said about that, because I actually love that. I didn't even think to do that before. So for example, if, if the doctor does a profi versus the hygienist does a profi, you're saying two separate codes. That way we know which one to pull from so they get the credit for the Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'll do that for a lot of things. Even like if I have a specialist in the office, so imagine we have a GP and a special, an endodontist in the same office. I'll actually set up a, a separate code because typically they, they charge two for fees. I'll actually set up a, a, a D3330 for the, for the GP and then I'll do an S3330 with a specialist, which will have a higher fee, but that way I'll know I'll never have to worry about if it's getting posted to the wrong provider or the wrong okay. fee. So I just want everybody to know that my office had this issue for a long time and we called in, we had specialists and general dentists and I've called EagleSoft multiple times. I knew there was a workaround and this is the first time I'm figuring out the workaround. So Andre, you are amazing. You guys should really pay attention to this because that was a great workaround. Yeah, because see, my, my theory is if you make enough codes and you don't have to remember these things, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to yell out to somebody, oh, don't forget to post this on that, you know, that person's account or this person's account. So yeah. so okay, that's great. that. Now, I won't go into the, this, uh, this is for medical billing. Um, I, I, it's not my area of expertise, so I'm not going to go down this road, but there's a way that you can actually include your CPT codes and diagnostic codes, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. 
Okay, exactly. Now, if we have one question, is there a free form button, something you would use for specified code? Is that a good place to have um, free form button? Say again, you, cr you, you broke up. Sorry. Um, can you mute the noise in the background while he's talking? Well, the background is behind him, so no, we really can't do that. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, is the free form button something you could use for unspecified codes? Yes, it should be on all of your 999 codes. It should be set for all your 999 codes. Um, let's do this. Let me go down to my 1999 or... 0999, there's one. There it is. So all of my, so I, and I, again, I rename it so it's preventive unspecified. And then I make sure that that it allow for preform description is set up. Okay, great. All and right. then when you're talking about hygiene versus dentist, you said H versus D for the code. They want to know how the insurance recognizes it. So we want to have the ADA code, right? Still be the D, but then our own code be the H. Yep. So here, here's a perfect example. So here's my root canal molar. And then here's my root canal that's referred out. And you see, and I'm going to just edit this. So I actually put an R in front of the service code, but my ADA code is still the same. So this is the code that bills out to the insurance. This is internal. This R code is internal to the office. I'm literally going to have my office as soon as we're done with this. I'm telling them about this. This, this is such a great workaround. Yeah, okay. It's easy. And, you know, the, the great, greatest part of this is, you know, when they're different fees, it's easy to make sure that they're going to bill properly and also to make sure that they're getting posted to the right provider, that the walkout's going to be proper. And, you know, it doesn't matter who's sitting up at the front desk. It's just going to happen the right way. So, so. when there is a free form, where are they writing in the free form description? Like if they're doing that? In a walkout. So let's do one. And, and again, I, it, here's my thing. You should almost never be writing in anything in the free form field. I mean, unless you're doing a, I mean, I, I worked in an office and we removed the BB that was shot in somebody's mouth when they were like, a, you know, five years old and the oral surgeon took it out and there was no other procedure to describe it. So we used a 7999 code and then put it into the description, but there was no other reason to do that. We could have done an X size of, of material. We could have done another different code. But there, there really shouldn't be a use for that 999 code. There's a, there's a descriptor for just about everything. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what somebody would be using it for, but, you know, uh, let's just show how it works. So I'll do a D1999. And then I could just go in here and say... Wait, we're not seeing anything at the moment. We're just seeing Oh, you're not seeing it? No, where's... Yeah. Let's see. Why is that? Maybe. How's that? There we go. Now we can okay. see it. So I can now, so this is preventive. Now I could just say removed BB from DLIP <laughs> and process it like that. But the problem is it's still going to go out as a 999 code. It's still going to have to go to an advisor and it's still not going to. Uh-oh. Andre, can you hear us? All right, guys, can you hear me? Type, you can hear me. I think we might have lost Andre. Uh, we can know Andre, but I'm good. Well, good, guys. Let's just talk about other things. Um, Andre, let me just, um, you got to love technology. So, Andre, I hope you guys are learning something here. Um, and hopefully, we can get him back. We may. I uh, can't hear you. Oh, hey. All right, Andre, are you there now? I'm here. Yeah, oh, there you go. All right. Wow. We lost we you for lost, a second. We lost you for a minute. That's okay. okay. So you had just shown us how to do, you could put in. Um, the 999s. Yeah. Okay, great. But that's not what you know. Oh, there we go. But that's not what you would rec recommend because you still have to put a narrative and it still has to be, it's still the code that's going out, correct? Yeah. It's, it's to me, that's a, that's a waste of your time and effort. So don't, don't do it. <laughs> that's bottom line. Don't do it. Okay, great. All right. So let's go back to. I'll go back to your screen because I see a picture of me, but not the screen. There it goes. There go. Okay. Discard this walkout. All right. Um, can you work? Can this work in payment section two? Freestyle descriptions. Payment section two. I'm not sure what she means. Okay. Send us more information on that question, and uh, Andre can keep going. I'll ask you when I find out. Yep. Okay. Can you see my? You're back to seeing my list. Yep. See your list. All right. Perfect. 
All right, so let's go back to, it's easier to, to work on that. Actually, I'm gonna go down to a crown code, D2740. Uh, it's gonna be easier to talk about some of the other sections here. So we've pretty much gone through this entire section. So let's talk about uh, this sections over here. So in the notes area, there really isn't anything they're gonna use, so let's skip it. I mean, there's really no description that we're gonna need there. If you look at the productivity, you can see how often this code's been used and then how much the code has been generated, how, how much money the uh, code is generated for the practice for the year. The history will tell you what, what patients have had the procedure done during that period of time. Right. Now, this is all stuff that you're showing us is great, but we can pull a lot of this from reports, right? You sure can. Yep. Yep. But it's good to well, know what all the buttons are, so. Well, this is one of my favorites is the fee schedule allows you to actually see for each of the plans that you're participating in what your fees are. The best part about this is I've gone in offices and I've opened this up to this area and the fee schedules sometimes have been more than the fee that the office is charged. That's great. Yeah. So you can actually see all of your, your fee schedules and what the master fee schedule is in, in one screen. And if you wanted to, you could update all these right in one screen. So again, so I make sure I'm right because I want to make sure I get the right information. If I've got a specialist on one fee schedule and a general dentist on another for the same code, this is why you would have the specialist under one service code that, um, and the doctor, general dentist on the other service code because then you can attach the right fee schedules to that doctor. Exactly. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. And that way your estimations are better. Right. Okay. Okay. So chart setup. And we've talked about custom charting and that kind of stuff, but let's go deeper into how the codes get set up for this thing. So the draw type is the drawing that's gonna be associated with this code. So you can see I've got, I've got a custom pixelated crown on here for my all ceram crown. Uh, color doesn't mean anything for the setups that we've talked about. All right, but the next section is what button in your quick picks are, is this code going to be on the dropdown? And we're gonna get over to the quick picks in a second. But so I have my porcelain crown on my crown button. All right, that just means it's a little drop downs next to the, to the main crown button. And then the action, now this is where it goes back to what we were talking about, you know, you have a missing tooth and the tooth doesn't subtract from the, the charting. It could be that it's not marked as missing. Or if it's a filling, it's, I mean, yeah, filling it, uh, it's not marked as carries. So these are the things that give you actions after you've set up the code. So it's a root canal, that's the thing. So one thing I want to mention here is one thing Andre and I are huge advocates of is treatment planning and walking things out in the back. Um, but the chart needs to be set up in such a way that the clinic clinicians actually use it. And oh, so yeah. knowing this and making sure the buttons are under the right group and that they can get to it easily will make your clinicians use it more because it'll make their life easier. So understanding this part, and again, we're just showing you overviews. There's a lot of training EagleSoft offers that you can go in and really learn this section. But knowing this will help you set up the chart to, to get your clinicians to use the, the, the procedures correctly. You're, you're, you're right on track. Yep. Read, read you to the choir here, right? You're right. All right. So for the next section, I'm going to jump out of here. and I'm going to go to our root canal code. All right. One other thing somebody brought yep. up while you're jumping over across. They said, should, can you update the fee schedule from that screen when you're in there? I recommend no. Is that what you would recommend too? Well, you can update it if, you, if you're working on one code. But, but that's not likely what you're doing when you're doing it. But yeah, if you if, if you need to, you can do it one at a time there. It's okay. just, it's, a, it's the long way around. Got it. Okay, good. So let's talk about our root canal code. And I'm going to go back to our chart setup. And now you can see that my draw type is root canal. And I don't have this on any buttons because it's on the main big button that says root canal. So I don't have it on the drop downs. And again, it goes back to, I want my list to be as clean as simple as possible so that my doctors can quickly find the code. So I don't have anything on that, that drop down. All right. And then the bottom part is I'm going to be using smart codes, which means if I put in a one canal tooth, three, 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 zero, it's going to show up. If I put in two canals, it's going to show that. If I do three, it's going to show up. And the great thing about this is, Again, we can't make mistakes if we choose the right tooth when we post a root canal. Right. Right. I'm going to jump over to my chart. I muted you while this person was talking. So. 
We're, we're learning about overhead bins to put their stuff in the overhead bin. And they're I, do. I, I could do this announcement. Yeah, exactly. Right. We've gone on the planes enough. So let's open up my chart. All right. Actually, here, let's let me, let me open up somebody who I know has nothing in their chart. And while you're doing this, for those of us who are live, we actually appreciate you're doing this in the middle of O'Hare because we were took time out of our day to be here. So I know that this isn't the easiest for you, but um, we appreciate it. Oh, it's easy for me. It's terrible for the people around me. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Good thing you're not working in real patient charts. We'd have a HIPAA problem. This is true. So let's click on a tooth and see the root canal button. So it uh, says, uh, you Wait, see we're the, not, you know, no, seeing my pop-up. Okay, hold on. Let me get the pop-up to share. How's that? There we go. Now we see it. Okay, so here's my root canal button. And you can see right there it says for an anterior root canal, but I'm clicked on a posterior tooth. If I click that button, the smart codes give me a molar because of the way we had it set up at the front. So I don't need to have three buttons or three drop downs for root canal. So it won't close. Somehow or another. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it has something to do with the share. Okay, let's see. Can you see it now? Yep, perfect. Okay, that's what it was. It got locked in. Okay, but, so if you can look at my drop down, I don't have any of my root canal codes showing here. All right, all I have is the big button for anything. So anterior, click, anterior. Premolar or bicuspid comes up, and then there is my molar. Same button three different procedure codes. That's great. So with these, just to kind of explain again, in case they're, because I love this too. And my doctors used to say, you know, they would walk out the wrong code or they would treatment plan the wrong code. So the more we understand what you're going through, the better it's going to be not walking out the wrong code. So the main button is the name of the main code. And then that will change if you do a smart code based off of the number of surfaces, the number of roots, posterior, interior, uh, or you click down and anything under root canal on that little triangle. Will, so you guys can decide through the way he just showed us how to get that list the way you want it. Correct, Andre? Correct. Yep. Now, the only thing it won't work on is your um, anterior and posterior composites. Okay. Yeah, right. that has to be separate. You're right. And that's why I do separate codes there. And now I've actually gone a step further and I actually have a bicuspid. All right, because what I found is that I actually create another code for bicuspids, and you can see it's an A2331, I mean 2391. What I did is I created a bicuspid code so that, you know, when it comes to estimated insurance, sometimes they cover anterior is different than they cover bicuspids, then they cover molars. So is your list, there, is your list of um, codes that you recommend that are smart code procedures versus not smart code? So for example, surfaces on a filling versus anterior to posterior. Do you a way to, that they would know or? Well, I, I have, there's a whole list um, in the Facebook group and uh, on my website for all of these, what I call admin codes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we'll give everybody at the end, we'll show you how to find Andre on his Facebook group because that's where he's got a lot of information for those that are listening that he can get you get you connected with. Yep, I'm, and I'm going to try to keep muting uh, when, when, you're, when you're talking. So. Okay, so you got quiet when you muted, so I don't know if you can bring the microphone back. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about now the quick picks. So you can see how I have my quick picks set up. And the way I set them up is this is my periodic exam or the most commonly done exam and then the other exams on the drop down and again because i've renamed those you can see how quick and easy it is for me to see evaluation 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 and then what type of evaluation it is right. i also have on here my exploding codes up at the top and the exploding codes are, just in case anybody's watching this and they're new to EagleSoft, it's so everything that's done during a new patient adult, adult treatment plan, it will walk out or, or um, put it together. So the exam, the, the recare, whatever you do, the x-rays, it, it puts it into one that one code. Exactly. And that's what I want to show you. So here's my, my recall for a child. And I've, obviously, I'm in an adult's chart. But if I hit this recall child, it's actually going to give me all the codes that are in there. Basically, it explodes out all the codes. So there's my periodic, there's my two bite wings, there's my cleaning, and there's my fluoride. It's now, done all in one shot. For you, Andre, would we, what if we um, are doing what you said between like doctor and hygienist, for example, for cleaning, right? So mm -hmm. the profies, sometimes the doctor does it, sometimes the, the hygienist does it. Would you have 
different exploding codes to show that too? I, I definitely would. Yep. yep. Anytime, okay. anytime I create these codes, I make sure that I split them out as often as possible. You know, okay. my, my theory is if you have to think about it, then it, it takes you too long. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so here's my exploding code setups. And here is my, uh, let's go back to that recall child so they can see how it's set up. So inside that code is my evaluation, my bite wings, my cleaning, and my fluoride. All right. And I'll show you a really cool one. So here's my full denture treatment plan. So instead of having to type out all of the things, upper denture, lower denture, this, that, the other thing, I can do a treatment plan in one click. I'll show you how. So let's open our patient back up. We realize this patient has to have a full denture. So I can just go right over here to my denture button, grab that denture treatment plan, hit the button, all right, and say, so this is the delivery. There's a try-in. There's a wax up. There's the vertical dimensions. There's the first impression. There's a the secondary impression. There's my upper denture, and I'm going to choose my teeth. There's my lower denture, and I'll choose my teeth. And I'm done. That's yep. all, it's all in one code. All in one code. Yep. And, and make sure I'm right on this. For those who are, uh, I don't train on EagleSoft like Andre does, so it's been a bit in there. But also for like walking out things, like I know some offices like to um, make sure they walk out that they do an oral, can uh, oral cancer screening or home health, um, you know, uh, consultation with a patient. You can put that in the in the exploding code so it will walk out with that on their receipt, correct? That's correct. Yep. You'll, and you'll see those all in the my new patient visits. They'll have all those things, the oral cancer screening, all that kind of stuff. Yep. I'm one step ahead of you. I, I should be out doing what you're doing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I wasn't doing this. Okay, great. Yeah, and the other the other great part is, you know, for scheduling purposes, if you're scheduling a next visit, it makes it so much faster. And I know a, a lot of people use exploding codes, but the issue is they typically will do this. They'll make them a, a word like a pro, which is the typical so adult pro fee visit. Um, and then when they go to add services, they're having to type in a pro, all right, to find it. But do you notice my codes are at the top of my list? So I don't have to go looking for them. The most commonly done procedures are those exploding codes. So now all I have to do is just grab recall adult and use it. Done. That is so cool. So again, that's another thing that I wish I would have known in the office because we had to tell all our new employees, you have to start RC or R, you know, REC or whatever it is, NPA, NPC. So it's great that you did that. So you just put a dot at the beginning of the name. A dot at the beginning of the, the name of, the, of the, the code and then a dot at the description to put it at the top of my quick pick list. And that would be something super easy to do. So everybody here, if you're not doing that, that would be a great change to make it easier for your team. Yep, and then and it truly does make them quick picks, right. you know? So, you know, and, and remember, because these are exploding codes, they're not actual service codes, you can delete the, the old ones that you have and recreate them. A lot of times I see people, you know, look, again, when the fluoride codes change, a lot of people went in and they actually will, they, they you know, they remade exploding codes instead of just modifying the ones that they have or deleting the ones that you had. So can you show us where we change the exploding codes? You go to list. Is yep. that where you are? Everything's under list. Hold on. Let's see. List. And I go to exploding codes. And let's just make a new one up. So new. And then this is going to be our P, new patient. And I, I always like doing this one. New patient teen. All right. So you go to child that has two bite wings. So let's do a teen. So you, and then here I'll put period, new patient. So why are you putting a period at the beginning of the script description? Is it pulling to go on the top of the list by the code or the description? So it goes to the top of the list of the service codes by the exploding code having a period. It goes to the top of the quick pick list, these little drop downs, when okay. the description alphabetically has a period at the beginning. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I just want yeah. everyone to know where things are from. And again, yeah. sorry for the noise in the background, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going, to I'm going to be quiet and just show you how to add the codes on here. So you just go okay. add. And display abbreviation, where would that show up if we'd filled that in? So the display abbreviation is what would either show up on the schedule or on the quick pick, if you made an exploding code your quick pick, it would show up there, but that's not typical, so I never put anything in there. Okay. 
Um, but what I will do is I would put this button on my uh, okay. Profi Adult button. So Got it. There. And again, uh -huh. so I'll close out of that, go back to my chart. Okay, on. there it goes. Can you see that chart? Yep, you can see it. Perfect. So on my drop down, there is my new patient team right there on the list. That's great. So again, for the for the team, front office, when you're watching this, or whoever watches this, this is where you can get with your, if things are being walked out in the back incorrectly, if they can't find it easily, if they're coming to ask you for codes, if we're having to do a lot of Learning this way to make sure that things go under the quick buttons and they're easy for the clinicians to find is going to really help change, you know, making a lot of mistakes and, and um, you know, changes later. So, yeah. And one of, the, one of the things I get, I, this question comes up all the time is, you know, I got so many things on my list and I don't even really use them. Um, what do I do about that? And I say, you know, you really need to go in here, get rid of the things you're not going to use. If you're never going to do stainless gold crowns, get rid of them. Does it come if you are just, if a trainer comes in or you just bought EagleSoft, it comes already kind of pre-populated the way they thought you would use it, right? But you're saying we definitely should go in there and customize it to work for our practices. And I think that's what he's saying, even though I think we might have lost him. So it looks like it broke out again. So actually, because of time anyway, um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go back to my desktop because I was about to call it. Anyway, so um, we've had some really great questions. So I want to thank everybody for those questions. As you guys know, um, Andre and I are both here to um, help you uh, with um, with your training, with learning EagleSoft and learning the things we need to be doing in the front office. So again, I'm Laura from Front Office Rocks, and we put these these webinars are free to you. They're going to be on the YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, plus we also have them for our clients in um, Front Office Rocks. If you're interested in learning more about Front Office Rocks, we do online training. Just go to frontofficerocks.com. And we are also uh, traveling around the country. We have an event coming up this Friday in Kansas City. And in December, we do live dental training in Dallas. So if you're watching this and it's live, please reach out to us if you're in the Midwest and want to come meet me on Friday in Kansas City and learn all day. Or if you're going to be in Texas, reach out to us for that. Um, our website, our training is online, available to you 24-7, video training, short 10-minute videos that anybody on the team can watch. And then for those of you that are here that are interested, if you're not already in the group right now, go over to Facebook or when you, you know, when your doctor, you know, knows that you're doing it and get involved in Andre's EagleSoft Field Guide group. It is the fastest growing, largest EagleSoft group. I refer everyone to this group. He not only, you know, tells us how to do things, but he, he writes step-by-step -step, um, uh, how-tos that you can refer back to. It's great for training. It's great for asking questions. So Andre is a great resource to us and for us. So we really appreciate it. So get involved with Andre's group. And then we will be doing another webinar, um, an EagleSoft webinar in about a month. We have, um, we're looking at new ideas. So you'll get a, a survey at the end of this. Some of the questions that we still have to address that we're going to do in upcoming webinars are insurance related questions. Um, how do we do, we handle reports, like let's go through the report section, um, possibly lab tracking, um, and then large practice, you know, how to make EagleSoft work for large practices. So if you haven't seen a webinar you've already wanted to talk about or one that I just listed, please fill out the survey, let us know. Keep an eye out for our next webinar as we will send another invitation out. We had almost 200 people register for this, so I'm super excited about it. So again, sorry for the technical issues that we had. Thank you to Andre for um, sitting down in the middle of O'Hare Airport and, and doing this training for us. I think it was valuable. I learned two major things um, during this. And thank you for everyone for joining us. And um, we will see you next time. If you want, if you have any questions, reach out to me at Front Office Rocks or get involved in Andre's group. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you for joining us.